Greetings everyone, this is Jeff from the Overwatch team. Really excited today to go into a lot of detail. I have many things to talk about, so I will try to be as quick as possible, but we're gonna cover a lot of topics. First up is the Torbjorn rework that everyone has been really excited about and anticipating for some time now. Now, Torb is not going to drastically change. He's not gonna do wildly new things, but he, he is gonna do a few new things. The first thing to note is that armor packs are gone. They're no longer his secondary ability. And with that, the scrap system is also going away. Now Torb will get an ability called Overload, which actually is gonna look a lot like his old ultimate Molten Core, which means he's gonna get some movement speed bonus, he's going to get some damage resistance, and he's gonna get a firing rate increase. So that is Overload, it's on a cooldown. It will make Torb more viable as a damage dealer in more situations where he can get in there and scuffle a little bit. Now, I mentioned Molten Core, his old ultimate is changing. Um, let me describe his new ultimate for a second. We're keeping the name Molten Core because we think it's cool. We love World of Warcraft and it's important to us. And uh, we love the way he yells out Molten Core. So we're keeping that. What he does when he does Molten Core now is that awesome claw hook hand that he has comes up into to frame. He has that magma hot liquid magma, some might say, that he can now shoot out. He has limited ammo for it, and he can shoot out pools of that liquid magma that are very devastating in terms of area of effect damage, and it does extra damage against armor. So we think that will give Torb um, some new utility in his abilities. Also changing is how the turret works for Torbjorn. Um, gone are the levels of turrets. There's no more level one, level two, and level three. It is only level two from now on. When he deploys it, it goes through a small but fast build time. And he also can deploy it with a slight toss, which means that he can get it into some areas that he couldn't previously get it to before, which we think will create a lot of interesting and fun gameplay. So the goal with all of these changes is to make Torb a more acceptable pick on both attack and defense and less map or role dependent than he was previously. So hopefully we'll see Tor being played in a variety of new ways. We think um, we were successful with this with Symmetra where we really changed her presence on the battlefield and her perception with players. So that is the Tor rework. There will be more details about the Tor rework such as changes to his rivet gun that we will detail on our forum. So please look out for those. We're also doing a number of hero balance changes. I'm not going to go into all of them. They'll all be detailed in the patch notes. They will hit the public test region. Not all of them will stay the same. So I'm not gonna go into heavy detail on those. We're making some changes to Orissa's gun and how that fires. Um, we're looking to improve 76 and McCree's viability with minor, minor changes. There will be some changes to Farah that increase her potential as a high skill hero, but decrease her sort of splash damage that was making her um, very dominant in particular on console. So we think the fair adjustment will be both um, a bonus in both directions, um, making her more powerful in the more skilled game, making her a little bit less powerful in uh, certain lower skill uh, situations. So we think that's gonna be great. Um, there are other balance changes to other heroes coming. Again, those will be detailed in the patch notes, which we think will be great. Another big focus that we've put into an in, in upcoming patch that's coming to the PTR is uh, great improvements to colorblind. Um, now, we know that colorblindness affects people who are colorblind in many different ways. So our old system worked for a lot of people who were colorblind, but there were many colorblind folks who still really struggled uh, with the game and perceiving friendly versus enemy. Thanks to all of the work that we did for eSports and the Overwatch League, we are able to add color changes, not only to the character silhouettes, but some of the interface elements. And we're giving you in the colorblind mode, we're giving you options to select which colors work for you. Um, luckily, we have an amazing producer in charge of this feature who happens to be colorblind himself. Um, and we've been really trying to interact with the colorblind community to, to 
suss out which of these colors are helpful or not helpful to people. Obviously, it's something we can iterate on. It's not the end of what we'll do for color blindness, but I think it's a great next step um, to making color blindness feel a lot better. Also coming up, um, we're in that time of year where the Halloween event is coming up, the Halloween terror. It's always one of my favorite times of the year. There's gonna be certain areas that um, look spooky uh, that weren't spooky previously, and I think you have those to look forward to. Um, now, I wanna talk a lot about events. We got a lot of feedback during summer games. I want people to know that we care deeply for the events. We're gonna continue to make awesome cosmetic content for the events, and I think some of the summer game skins were absolutely amazing, Baseball Zenyatta, for example. And we've got some great stuff coming for the Halloween event. For example, Junkenstein's monster finally gets a bride, and I'll let you speculate about who that might be. Um, so there's great cosmetic content coming for the events. Now, what is not gonna change radically is there's not gonna be dramatic new game modes or changes to the existing game modes in Halloween Terror. We feel like Junkenstein's Revenge is super fun. Um, there are some minor iterations coming that we think are gonna improve it, but for the most part, it's gonna be uh, similar to how it was before. And this is very intentional because what the team is working on right now, the team focus is very different. We're focusing on these hero balance changes. We think the recent support balance changes that we made were extremely successful and really changed the game in a great way. So we've got another round of balance changes coming, as I mentioned earlier, the Torb rework. And we're focusing heavily on quality of life changes, such as the colorblind mode that I mentioned before, um, you can also see some other features that have been added to the game recently, such as LFG and endorsements that have been a great improvement to the game. But it's been a focus shift for the team. We're focusing less on adding new versions of sporting events to summer games, for example, or adding new versions of Junk and Science Revenge and focusing on these other things as well. So we hope you understand we're trying to be as transparent as possible about what our focus is. Um, things like the hero gallery filtering or the what's new wouldn't happen if we were focusing on this other stuff. So that's what's going on there. Similarly, I talked about last spring about three upcoming social features. Um, two of those turned out to be LFG and endorsements. I think they were extremely successful. I think the player bases like them. We're still iterating on them. We're still trying to make them better. And I mentioned that around this time frame that we're in right now, we would see the introduction of a third social feature. Well, I was wrong about that and I apologize. And it's part of why we try not to talk about stuff too early. The social feature is something we're super excited about. We're working really hard on, I think um, some of the smartest, best people at Blizzard are working on it right now. The problem is it's way more technically challenging once we got into the work of actually creating it than we had anticipated. There were things that came up that we didn't see were gonna come up. And we'd rather make the feature perfect and take our time with it than rush it out. That means it's inevitably gonna push its release, release date out, um, definitely out of this year, but I don't have a new date for you, unfortunately. At this point, I've promised you one date that we're not gonna deliver on and I don't wanna do that again. Hopefully you understand why this is happening. Um, it's sort of part of software development for all of us who have uh, worked on games or other types of software we understand, but for those of us who haven't, it can be confusing sometimes. You know, well, why did you tell me we were gonna get it and then we're not gonna get it? Um, I think there's a lot of other great stuff going on with the game right now. I think the development team focus is pretty awesome. We have a long list of quality of life features that we want to focus on uh, to deliver to you guys. We think the hero balance changes, the Torb rework, LFG and endorsements are all contributing to making Overwatch a lot better. And there's a lot more on our list that we plan to deliver. Um, that's everything I have for today's developer update. We're really looking forward to feedback as all this stuff makes its way to the PTR. As always, we're reading everything on social media. We're reading our, our forums. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for playing the game and thanks for hearing me out today.